What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to share two quick tips on how you can create more organic looking explosions inside of Blender utilizing the Chaos add-on and a Mantaflow simulation. Alright guys, so here we are inside of Blender and in the middle of our scene here, I've just added some Chaos uh, 360 ground burst here using the dynamic smoke fire option with a 360 ground burst. So as you can see here, if I just play through our scene, we just have a short burst of fuel particles. So I've just added three of them here and kind of timed them a little bit differently to create kind of an interesting looking fuel field. So you can see them one by one here. I have one that kind of blasts out directly upward. And then I have one in the middle here that's kind of similar, but the timing is a little bit after the first one. And I've also increased the lifetime of that as well. And then I have a third one here, which is a little bit bigger. And it's just kind of the base of the explosion. So just three different basic fuel fields that I've added using the 360 ground burst. And the first thing I want to show you guys is why not to leave the initial starting and ending velocity at one for the base of your explosion. You can leave this parameter at one for kind of burning debris and stuff like that. But when you're creating the actual base of your explosion and you want a really violent blast, you want to increase these quite a bit. So right now, these three fuel operators, as you can see here in our flow settings, the initial velocity is at one. And that's because I've added them with this parameter at one. So of course we can increase this to 10 and then any further fuel systems that we add to chaos will have a 10 starting and ending velocity in this parameter here. But anyways, I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like when I bake this out with the initial velocity at one because I've gotten some inquiries about this specific effect and it doesn't look very good when you do it like this. So I'll just show you this example really quick. I'll go to our domain settings here. I'm gonna leave adaptive domain on just for the sake of this tutorial since I'm just going to be showing you these examples and I'm not gonna go for a final render in this specific case but uh, the main thing I've changed in our domain settings, other than the chaos domain defaults, is uh, just the reaction speed. I've dropped it down to 0.05 so that the flames would linger in the domain a little bit longer. So that's the only thing I've changed. And now let's go ahead and just bake out our data and let's see what we get with the initial velocity parameters at one and then compare it to some other results later in the video. All right guys, so this is the result of our simulation. And as you can see, it's not a very good one. It's looking pretty terrible actually. And the reason for that, as I mentioned, is because there's just not enough explosiveness in the blast itself. All we've done is just created particles and blasted them out, which is sort of like what an explosion is. However, there's a lot more things we can do to it to make it better. So as you can see, I'll just kind of scroll through the playback here. This is what we have and it looks, you know, at the end here, it doesn't look too terrible. You can see the smoke breaking up a little bit, but the initial part of the blast looks pretty bad. And um, as I mentioned, you really only want to have the initial starting velocity in Mantaflow at something like one, which is what these fuel particles are at right now, when it's kind of a burning particle at the end of the explosion. So what we're gonna do now, just for the sake of this tutorial and to show you guys different settings, is we're going to bake the exact same fuel systems with the initial velocity at 10. So I'm just going to select each of our particle systems here and we could rebuild a new particle system with chaos, but it should be a pretty quick change here. I'll just select each particle system, go to our physics properties tab here, and then I'll change the initial velocity to 10 on each of these. And there we go. Now we're going to select our domain cube. I'll go ahead and free the data. And once again, I'll click on bake data and let's see what we get. All right guys, so Blender has finished out baking our second simulation. And as you can see, it's looking better already just by increasing that one parameter of the initial velocity of our fuel fields. So as you can see here, if we just scroll through our timeline, it looks just much more violent right off the bat. However, one thing I don't like about this, as you can see here, we get kind of these like ink drop effects right at the ends of our particles, which is not really totally bad. However, it's a little bit too fluid and not chaotic enough in my opinion. However, this is a much better result than before. You can see we have this nice billowy smoke and the explosion is burning off nicely here. And we just have generally a good shape of our explosion here. So this is a pretty good starting point. A lot of the time before I add any turbulence fields, which is what we're going to add next, I'll just create some basic fuel systems with the 360 ground burst or omnidirectional 
or directional burst inside of chaos with whatever you know smoke type that I want. And I'll just kind of create a general shape of the fuel field before I get any further. So this is a pretty nice test bake. We could add some high resolution noise to this and it might look pretty good, but I wanna show you guys one more way we can make this look a little bit more organic using just a simple turbulence field. So we're just gonna break up the smoke in a little bit more interesting ways. So we get those kind of medium to small scale details on our simulation. So to do this, what we're going to do is we'll just go ahead and press Shift A. I will add a force field and then add a turbulence field. And I'll just move this off to the side here. And I'm going to go to our turbulence field settings in our physics properties tab here. And I'm going to make the size of our turbulence field maybe something like 0.25. So as you can see here, you know, 0.25 is gonna be about a quarter of our grid size here, which I think is gonna be pretty nice for this size of explosion. You can kind of use your judgment depending on the size of your smoke domain and simulation. But I think 0.25 should be pretty good. And then I'm also going to increase the strength of our turbulence and then keyframe it going down over the course of our explosion. So probably we want our turbulence to be pretty heavy until maybe frame 50 or so. So on frame 50, I'll increase the strength of our turbulence field to 10, which will be, uh, you know, a moderate strength for our turbulence field. Not extreme, but uh, noticeable enough. And while my cursor is over the strength, I'll press I to add a keyframe of that value. And then I'm just going to keyframe it going down over the next, uh, we'll say the next uh, 15 seconds. So at frame 65, we'll bring the strength all the way down to zero and add another keyframe there. And I actually might make it a little bit maybe just bring over these keyframes so the uh, turbulence ends a little bit later. We want the turbulence to be mostly at the very beginning of our blast to create that really violent result and just break up our smoke in a little bit more organic way. So this should be pretty good. Another thing you can do if you want, I'm not gonna do it in this particular video, but you can actually animate the turbulence field moving so that your turbulence won't be the same pattern in the smoke the whole time. However, for this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it as it is and we're going to select our smoke domain here. I'll go ahead and free the data. And now I will click on bake data once more and let's see what we get now that we've added the turbulence field to our simulation. All right guys, so right off the bat, you can tell that there's a lot more smaller and medium scale detail on this mesh. And if we play through the blast here, let's go ahead and play through it. You can tell that it gets broken up much quicker compared to the previous results. Now, I think there are a few things that we could do differently here. In my opinion, if I were to do this again, I'd probably increase the strength of our turbulence field at the beginning of our blast to break up our particles a bit more. However, it's not bad, so I'm just gonna go with it for now for the sake of this tutorial. But this is looking pretty good. I'll do a quick uh, render preview here, just at 50%. Do a quick viewport render animation here, and we'll play back in real time here in a second. All right, so we'll go ahead and close our window here, and now we can view our animation in real time just by going to our View Animation button now that we've uh, done a quick preview render. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. Of course, we could definitely make this better, but for a fairly quick setup, this is looking uh, pretty nice. All right, guys, so this is pretty much the extent of this tutorial. These are two different techniques you can use to add a little bit more organic look to your explosion. Just increase that initial velocity a bit and then add that turbulence field to break up the smoke a bit initially in the blast. To finish off the tutorial, I'm just going to bake the high resolution noise on top of our simulation base mesh here and then show a bit of shading just for the sake of showing the final result of our quick little simulation here. So I'll just select our smoke domain, go to the smoke domain settings. I'll scroll down here to our noise checkbox. Go ahead and select that. And I will up res our simulation by two, which is not a lot. However, it should be pretty good for kind of a medium resolution explosion. And I'll leave the strength at one. And then I brought down the scale from two to one as well, just so the noise has slightly smaller vortices that's being baked on top of our initial simulation. So this should be pretty good here. I'll go ahead and save our project. And now I will bake the noise and let's see what we get for our final result. All right guys, so now we have baked our high resolution noise on top of our original simulation base mesh. And as you can see here, there's some more detail in the smoke and fire, which is a nice touch to the simulation. And before we end this tutorial, I'm just going to go into the shading tab here and adjust a few of the settings with the chaos fire shader. As you can see here, if I go to rendered view, you'll notice that the simulation is not very dense. So what we want to do is crank up the density or the smoke contrast a bit first. You can also adjust the smoke color and all these other factors as well, as well as adjust the smoke and fire on the color ramp. But the first thing we're going to do is just increase the smoke density. I'm going to go with something like maybe 2000. 
see what that looks like. Now we're getting a little bit denter smoke. I'm gonna actually increase it a bit more, maybe 4,000. And to keep in mind, we can increase the flame brightness as well. This is looking pretty good once it renders out here. It's not a bad looking simulation. I might increase the density a little bit more even. Maybe I might try something like 6,000. Pretty dense. Um, you don't always have to do this. It depends on the style of simulation you're going for. But I tend to like a little bit denser gasoline style explosions. And you can see now the uh, fire, you can see like little black bits in the fire, which is that smoke that's uh, kind of surrounding the flames. And you can adjust the color ramps here as well to maybe get a little bit brighter of a look. Something over here maybe. I'm gonna kind of leave it in the middle and then maybe increase the flames contrast a bit to maybe four. You can also increase the flame's brightness. It kind of depends on your own, the kind of look you're going for. There's a lot of different ways you can shade these explosions. And that's one of the biggest parts of creating these explosions is finding a way to shade them in a way that you like. But this is looking pretty good, I think. I might just bring this over a little bit more so it's not quite as bright. But I think this is gonna be a nice look. And uh, yeah, on the screen right now, I'll render out the final animation for you guys to see. And as you can tell from our previous example, just by changing a few settings, we can make the explosion simulation look a lot more more violent and get a little bit more of an explosive result. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel and I'll see you next time.